the locker room. This is everyone hurrying to get ready before we have to go out to Branson. Coach, Coach Marlin. Is this your first tournament? No. As coach? Yes. My one question for you is, what is the average airspeed velocity of a swallow carrying a coconut? I don't know how to answer that one. 0 for 1. 0 for 1. Come in here. Are you a freshman? Yes. Is this your first tournament? Yes. As a freshman? Yes. Okay. One thing that I think we should clear up is what is the average airspeed velocity of a swallow carrying a coconut? I cannot answer that. For two. Oh, for two. Not a good start. Not a good start. We're not locked in. Not locked in. Kanan. Kanan, 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 Kanan. I'm nervous about I like your wooden watch. Thanks. I have one also. Mm. I'm not wearing it though, so I can't show it. Okay. Are you a freshman? Yeah. Is this your first tournament? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Mm, I think. Yeah. We'll have to check that. Can Paul check that for us? Okay. Um, my one question for you to make sure that you are ready for this tournament. Mm. That's, that's my question. Okay. Oh. What is the average airspeed velocity of a swallow carrying a coconut? African or European. We're ready. We are ready. Except we're not ready. We're really not ready. Let's see if the bus is here yet. It's here? Free enterprise. Free enterprise. Let's see what the bus looks like. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. Can the viewers talk back? No. This is where we will store Paul Crisp. He will be right down there. It's, he likes his small spaces. He can set up all of his uh, equipment, all of his computers, so that he can be secluded and do his work, you know? He, he really likes to immerse himself. My one question for you is, All right, joined now by Jacob Johnson here back in uh, Branson. And little unique opportunity this morning for the Wildcats to be involved with some of the Branson Area Special Olympics uh, teams. And putting on a little basketball clinic this morning, Jacob, I think the first thing you recognize or realize here, this is a heck of a lot of fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah, we love this. Every year we really look forward to this. And it's just a chance for our team to give back and really show what we're about. And, and it really just it, it kind of embodies our team. and and how coach has really set the standard for the culture and the, and the environment that we operate in. And it's just a chance to live that out. Another kind of neat thing about this is it's not just the Wildcats. The IU East is here as well. Corbin University, the team you knocked out. I mean, you're competing against these guys one day, and then a couple days later, you're working together to maybe make a difference in some kids' lives. That's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it just shows it's a lot more than basketball for us. And, and no matter really what the team here, we all have a similar goals and we want to give back uh, to Special Olympics and the community here and uh, just live out our faith. So It's awesome. It's, uh, it's probably the greatest hour of the week, to be honest with you, because we take our minds off ourselves, the pressure, the stress, and re we're reminded why we're here and why we're created, right? It's to give to other people. It's to um, just give of yourself and to love other people. And so it's well needed I'll tell you that as a coach he's been locked in and is focused on every play every scout to just say you know what for the next hour let's just focus on people and uh, that's why we're here you know the other thing you know she kind of just can sit back and watch and you can see 
as a teacher, as a coach, you can see where this is the element where some of your guys shine in another area where like you see their strengths and their gifts and their abilities. Exactly. You know, it's fun for me as a coach to to, to watch guys exhibit their their gifts and abilities. Uh, Trevor's out there just playing with little kids. Aaron Murray's holding kids. Ben is with an adult showing them how to shoot. I mean, we've got some guys that have some incredible hearts mm -hmm. and they're on display and it's really fun to watch. The Indiana Wesleyan University Wildcats began their journey to Branson, Missouri for the NAIA Division II National Tournament on Monday. They arrived in Springfield, Missouri Monday and ended their night with devotions. Jesus is the center uh, of your relationship when dating and marriage and he gave out a lot of statistics. Really and a film his session. Shoulder and he will just bowl you. He goes after every rebound like a madman. He leads the nation in field goal percentage. Yep. The journey continued Tuesday morning when senior Wildcat Nate Bubash led devotions to start the day. It says, in the same way, faith by itself, it is not accompanied by action, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. After devotionals, the Wildcats traveled to Missouri State for their first practice of the week. Assistant coach Jeff Clark and senior Lane Mehurian talked about the focus and intensity of the first practice. Yeah, we've been talking to our guys a lot about being on edge, both on the court and spiritually. Just what does it mean to be on edge? So we didn't come out to practice and walk through things. We really competed today. Yeah, I was uh, really pleased with our uh, second squad, the guys who uh, put in all the work um, without some of the glory time, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, they guarded us really well today, and that's what you need if you're going to play a good game because the other team's going to put five guys on who can really defend, and that's what our team came out and showed us today, and so they helped us get better, and that's what I'm really proud of. After they hit the showers, once again, the Wildcats were on the road to finally arrive in Branson, Missouri at College of the Ozarks for a tradition of story time. Nate Bubash talks about his last tournament. Yeah, I mean, the past three years I've been a lot of fun and I'm looking for one more, you know, hopefully five more games, one last trip out here and then my career is over, so looking for a, a great last trip. A short period of rest and the Wildcats were off to the traditional start of the NAIA tournament, the Dixie Stampede Dinner Theater. Before this, my belt broke. We were on break, I just cut my man up. Really? No. He wanted a fresh fade, but nothing too fancy, just a two to a three, you know, so. The final walkthrough at the hotel in the evening and then the Wildcats are done for the night. For Wildcat Central, I'm Derek Down. The Wildcats begin the day in devotions led by Shea Robbins from Canacut Camps. Every single moment of every single day, you bring that bar with you and the power of that grace, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't dissipate, it's reality doesn't slip away. Once the devotionals were over, the team traveled to a Branson Intermediate School for their second day of practice. A lighthearted but focused practice is just what the Wildcats needed before their first game. It's kind of hard to be serious with the leadership that we have just because they're just, they're funny guys and uh, just like in practice, uh, it's just, there's, we definitely have serious moments but it's always, it's always light and we're always uh, having fun when we're playing. 
Next up was a period of rest for the Wildcats before coming back for the Parade of Champions later in the evening. The Wildcats go back to the hotel and get some rest before their opening game tomorrow morning. 8.30 breakfast, then we got taping at 9.40. We want to leave here by 10.10. It gives us the number one seeded Wildcats will take on the number eight seeded Warriors of Corbin University from Oregon. That game will tip off at approximately 1 o'clock Eastern time. For Wildcat Central, I'm Derek Gowan. Hey! Wildcats began tournament play on Thursday against Corbin University. Lost at Bethel a week or so ago. Gets it across the line now. Here's an alley of the Jacob Johnson for the slam. Yeah, we were really pleased to get a win. They've been playing as well as anybody mm -hmm. in the country in their last three games. They beat some really high level teams on the road. So even though it was one versus eight, it's March and we knew yeah. they could knock us off if we weren't ready. Go down side, Trevor Waite. Now here, driving with the basketball. No place to go, shot up and a shot. That's what we were really excited about. There were a lot of guys that made plays on both ends of the court. It wasn't just Lane and Bob, mm -hmm. not just the starters. Across the board, we had guys making plays, and that has you excited for what might come. Right now, now trying to go inside as Evans, put it up and got another one. He scored nine points in what, a minute and a half? Yeah, we saw that in the conference championship against Bethel. He, he was really starting to come out of his funk and it, it continued in practice and continued today. Coach Tonegal has been getting a lot of extra shots up with him and some of the other shooters so it was really fun to watch him go off in the first half. Marossi, Marossi gives it now over to Jake Blood. Stolen away by Peters. Peters will go coast to coast and he'll lay it up and drive. And here's a drive by Jacob Johnson. Shot up, shot good, whistle foul. He'll go to the line. You see him carry that gun. Look out, now he goes to Okafor. Now to Murray, who's- and Ben came in and gave him a, a little bit of a change of pace on defense and really turned the game defensively as well. The runner is relaxed now. First time today, here's a drive! And a slam by Benny Carlson from the baseline. Look! Here is Seiku Jallo to Jacob Johnson. The slam is good and he's fouled. And the lead goes to 11. And Jallo missed it, one of two. Oh, he gets his own miss and he scored. How about that? Now it's good. Now we're good. Wildcats came away with the win by a score of 100 to 87. The next game for the Wildcats is Friday at approximately 1 p.m. Eastern Time. For Wildcats Central, I'm Derek Gowan. Tap to the Cats, and here we go. We got a seal there. Now trying to go with it, stopping, popping, and scoring. Yeah, we were impressed when we saw Northwestern play on film, but after the game, we thought they were even better than expected. They were so physical defensively, they didn't make any mistakes offensively, and number five was such a special player. He's trying to go baseline, got cut off, kicks it out. Now here's Oka for a three. Got it! What a move that was. And they're back up by three. Here is Evans, a tie as he knocks down the three. Yeah, when you can shoot the ball like they can, you're capable of going on a run like that. And they were their explosive team offensively. In the coffee, just a freshman. Here's a three-pointer out of the corner. Yeah, we were stagnant offensively. And Coach ripped Bob a little bit. And then we were subbing him out. And Bob called off the sub and said he wanted to stay in then scored eight points down the stretch. So that's what a senior leader does. Got the ball back to Peters, a three, the Cats need it, and he got it. Uh, now we got a two-point game again.
Yeah, Trevor played a great game. There was one time uh, in transition where we were yelling at him to pull it out, and he went in and scored a layup, and it was a phenomenal play. Yeah, it says a lot about them. We took an eight-point lead with under five to go, and they still found a way to claw back in the game. Three. They get the ball to the free throw line. Back to Koima. Koima in the corner. Here's a long three. Passes to Jacob Johnson. Peters. Peters for three. He's fouled. And it goes. And he's going to shoot the free throw. We've seen this before. Eight on the shot clock. Peters for an NBA three. Got it. Peters again. Peters again. The Wildcats win by a final score of 77 to 75. The next game for the Wildcats is Saturday against Tabor. That game will begin at approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Time. For Wildcat Central, I'm Derek Gowan. The Wildcats began their day by spending time with the champion athletes of Branson. It's probably the greatest hour of the week, to be honest with you, because we take our minds off ourselves, the pressure, the stress, and we're reminded why we're here and why we're created, right? It's to give to other people, it's to um, just give of yourself and to love other people. And so it's well needed, I'll tell you that. As a coach, he's been locked in and is focused on every play, every scout, to just say, you know what, for the next hour, Let's just focus on people. Oh yeah, we love this. Every year we really look forward to this and it's just a chance for our team to give back and really show what we're about and, and it really just, it, it kind of embodies our team and, and how Coach has really set the standard for the culture and the, and the environment that we operate in and it's just a chance to live that out. After a fulfilling morning, the Wildcats headed back to warm up for the big game ahead. The Blue Jays from Hillsboro, Kansas. There's the whistle, ball in the air. Tap is controlled by Bob Peters. Pressure by Tabor. And Bob Peters going to take a quick three. Fair. Wow. Yeah, they were really good defensively. They were solid throughout. We had to go in spurs. They, we had stretches where we couldn't really get great shots, but there were times when some of our guys took over, like laying in that stretch. By Tabor so far early. Here's Grant Evans open for a three. Got it! You know, we were so scared of transition. We were going to stay away from the offensive glass and send guys back, but somehow our guys made enough plays, and we ended up getting more offensive rebounds than we've gotten the last several games combined. Coming down the other way, Peters. Peters will lay it up with the left hand. Missed it. Got back up and good by McCurry. So often when you get stops, it leads to easier shots on the other end. We were able to build a big lead mostly because of our, our defense. The Wildcats won by a score of 64 to 62. The next game for the Wildcats will be against Union Kentucky on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. For Wildcat Central, I'm Derek Gowan.
both ends, free throws, one on one. Had a great run so far. Looking for some more. Definitely, uh, we had a good, solid walk through. Uh, stayed to our regular routine throughout the season, so I think it's good to give some guys consistency. In this tournament, defense has been the key. If you want to make a run in here in the Final Four, defense will be the key again. Right? Definitely, yeah. We're gonna have to stop the ball. This team gets in the lane uh, at will. It seems like, and so we're. I mean, that's something that, um, fortunately. We, you know, we've done a good job so far this tournament, but it's going to have to be amped up this game. We go with the opening tap, and it goes to Union. Now foul on each ball club. Cats inbound the ball now. Here's a three by Evans. Got it! Back now to Okafer, down low. McCurin, good entry pass, and he put it in. Driving inside, another shot up and in. This is off to Mahirin, who's done everything for the Cats. Going to try to do it again, went inside and got another one. He may score 40 tonight, and the Cats could lose by 20. Wait, outside, finds Jacob Johnson for a three. It's good! It looked good, and it is good. On the left, Fakes going to take a long three and bury it. Right in front of Trevor Way. How about that shot by Tyrone Sherman? Here is Sherman. Sherman with it. Here's another three by Newby. He got it again! And it's a 20-point lead. Run by Indiana Wesleyan. They lead by 12. And here's Jacob Johnson the other way. To get to 2,000. But that's not what's important here. Got to get back in the game. Peters scores. Peters has 10. Martin rebound Jacob Johnson out to Peters. Peters, if he can get it, and he does, he's over 2,000. And they are deserving if they hang on here. There's a nice pass by Sherman. Slam jam by Mike Martin. After a hard-fought game, the Wildcats eventually fall to the Bulldogs of Union College to finish their season. Here with Bob Peters, senior Bob Peters, and does that even seem possible when you hear that, that uh, this is your last go-around? Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been really fun, and uh, it's gone by really fast. It's been a real blessing to be part of this great program, but it's gone really fast. Now, Bob, I know one thing people are just dying to know. You, you, you came in with the mullet. You're going to go out with the mullet. Will the mullet survive after basketball season? The mullet will not, will not survive much longer after basketball season. Uh, my girlfriend just saw it on FaceTime a couple minutes ago, and she said it was hideous. So it's gonna go pretty quickly after basketball season. And I got some uh, professional interviews coming up. I gotta, I gotta look decent for it. You're, you're on track to graduate. What, what did you study here at Indiana Wesleyan? Business administration. All right, so you have, you'll have that degree in hand. But another thing we, we, we know about you that your dad was a coach, is a coach, and uh, maybe no matter what you do, you might want to get into a little bit of coaching someday. Yeah, potentially uh, at some level I'd like to coach, whether that's a little league or whether that's uh, high school, or maybe college if it, if it pans out that way. But, yeah, I'd like to coach sometime. Last question. These guys you came in with that you'll graduate with, some of them are a little more ornery than others, a little bit more pranksters than others. Probably Lane Mahirn is the worst of the bunch, though, isn't it? Yeah, you never know with Lane uh, what he's going to do. And I never like to uh, – Put my shoes on with Lane around me or do anything, turn my back on Lane. I don't do that very often. Uh, well, you never know. He might even be hiding just so off camera even. Uh, yeah, he usually is off camera doing something ordinary like right now. But uh, he's a great guy and a good teammate and uh, just really fun to have him. Eight on the shot clock. Peters for an NBA three. Got it! Peters again! Peters again! Passes to Jacob Johnson. Peters. Peters for three. He's fouled. And it goes! Shoot the free throw. We've seen this before. Here with senior Nate Bubash and Nate. Uh Boy, it doesn't seem possible, but uh, four years have gone by and hopefully have one last run in your guys. But uh, four years have been quite a ride for you here hasn't it been yeah absolutely I mean it's been a lot of a lot of fun over the past four years and it's crazy to think to think we only have one week left or you know only one guaranteed game left really so 
I just kind of go out there and give it our all and mm -hmm. hopefully get a win. One thing I know that's talked a lot about you guys get to be their senior years. It's the guys they spent that four years with and the friendships that they developed. And uh, I think when we're out here, we can even see it sometimes. This is a pretty tight-knit group of uh, guys and a tight-knit team. And, and you guys really do like each other and want to spend time with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know for the seniors, especially Murray, uh, Bob, and Lane, we, for the past four years, we've done everything together. I mean, we've had a lot of workouts, a lot of games, a lot of practices, early mornings, late nights even. So it's been a lot of fun, you know, play, being able to play with them, grow with them on and off the court. And I, and even the new guys this year, we've really got to know them a lot. And, you know, it's been a, it's been a great, great time getting to know different guys over the past few years. So now hopefully a little more basketball left, but uh, you're going to be graduating soon. And what did you study and, and what do you hope to do with that, that degree? Uh, well, I had a double major in business administration and finance, and as of two weeks ago or so, I accepted a position with Charles Schwab, mm -hmm. where I will become a financial consultant in uh, the next few years. Well, that's awesome. You're already gainfully employed. Your, your parents have to like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a job that I think I'll really enjoy, and I'll be able to help people out with their finances, which a lot of people struggle with, struggle with unfortunately. So uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Nate, we just want to say thanks for joining us. For all, really all four years, it's been a pleasure to watch you guys play and uh, hope, hope to watch you for a little bit longer, but just congratulations on a great career here. Congratulations on the job and, and uh, looking forward to hear great things in the future. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.